Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve combination sum. And this is another problem from that blind 75 list. The link will be in the description. So we are doing one more problem and have very few problems from this list remaining. So we're given an array of distinct integers called candidates and we're given a target integer called target. And we just want to return a list of all the unique combinations of candidates where all those numbers end up summing to the target value. And we're allowed to return those combinations in any order. And we're also allowed to use the same number from candidates multiple times. But we don't want to have duplicate combinations. For example, if two, two, three sums up to seven, right? That means three, two, two. These are the exact same values, right? Just in a different order. These sum to seven as well. So we don't wanna add both of these combinations to the result because they're the exact same. So what we're saying is we want combinations. We don't want permutations that end up summing to, to the target value. So in this example, you can see that we are given these candidates and a target of seven, and we have two different ways that we can sum up to seven. Of course, seven by itself does sum up to the target, and two occurrences of the two value and one occurrence of the three value added together are gonna lead to seven as well. So then we return these two combinations as our result. So I would say the difficult part about this problem is trying to figure out how to eliminate duplicate combinations, right? For example, if we just brute force it like a decision tree, so we have four different values we can choose. We can choose each of them an unlimited number of times. What we can do is have four decisions in our decision tree, right? Like that might be the naive thing that you start with. So we would get two, three, six, and seven, and then we'd basically continue that, right? On one path over here, we would find, okay, we found the seven, so we found the target, right? So we found one way that we can reach the target. So therefore we don't need to continue down here because as we add more numbers, all of these values are gonna be positive. So as we add more numbers, we're only gonna get a sum larger than the target. So, you know, I think it's kind of obvious why we don't continue down this path, right? But down here from the six, let's try to continue, right? We can add a two, so we'd get six, two. We could add a three, so we'd get a six, three. We could add another six, so we'd get six, six, and we could add a seven where we'd get six, seven. So notice how all of these are gonna sum to a value greater than the target. So down this path, we never ended up reaching the target. We only went over the target. So we don't continue down any of these paths, right? But now let's continue down this path. So here we'll get, we can get another two. We can get a three, we could get a two six, but in that case we would get eight, which goes over our target. We could also get a seven two seven, but that also goes over our target. Now here's the part where we're gonna end up getting duplicates. So I'm gonna show you why this type of decision tree does not work. So here we could get a three, for example, right? So we'd get two, two, three. Now that sums to the target. Down this path, we could choose a two. So we'd get two, three, two. Notice how both of these end up summing to seven, but they're the exact same. They're just in a different order. We have two twos and a three. Here we also have two twos and a three. So we ended up getting the same one twice. So this works in finding the combinations, but we end up getting duplicate combinations. So what kind of decision tree can we try that gets us the result that we want, but does not have these duplicates? Let me show you how we're gonna do that. Let's logically think about this. We know that we have one value in our candidates, two, right? So we can try to get all combinations that include this two value, right? And see if any of those combinations leads us to the target value seven. Now we could also, so then if we make a second decision over here, right? In this decision, we're definitely including at least one, two. Now, if we go down this path, we want to make sure that none of the combinations down this path ever match the combinations down this path. How can we guarantee that? Well, in this side, we said we're definitely including at least one, two. How about in this side, we don't include even a single two. So basically we skip Two. So here we're going to have an empty array because we skipped the two, right? All we said is we were able to start from here, but we said, no, we're just not including a two. We're just going to do combinations with these three values. That's going to guarantee that none of the combinations on both sides are going to be matching. 
And that's basically the logic that we're gonna follow. So from here, remember, we can include multiple twos if we want to, right? So one decision here could be including a second two. So we get two, two. Now, this, is, this path is going to include all combinations that include at least two twos, right? And But remember, our definition for this decision tree needs to be recursive, right? Because we don't want any of the combinations down this path to be the same as any of the combinations down this path. So what we said here is we're going to include two twos. How about down this path? We say that we're, we're, we're not including any more twos now. What we're saying is we had one two, but now we're done. We're skipping twos. Now we're only going to use values from here. So that's the recursive thing, right? We're basically doing the same decision drawing down here as we did up here. So here we're going to say we ended up skipping the two and we're, we still only have one single two. And so let's just continue to repeat that. So over here, we're going to add another two. So we'll have two, two, two. And over here, we'll say, okay, we're now we're done with twos, right? Where we're going to keep ourselves at a limit of two occurrences of two. And we're basically going to continue this logic until we get to our base case. So over here, you're going to see if we ended up having four twos, we'll get a target of eight. So therefore, we went over our target value. So we're going to stop. But down here, right, this was our path where we said, okay, we're not going to include any more twos in this path. So here we can make a decision. We can add a three. So then we'd get two, two, three. So we're continuing that recursive definition. And so notice how we have two, two, three, that's seven. So we did find at least one combination. But remember down now, if we make a decision to the right, we want to make sure we don't have any duplicates from here. So in this side, we decided to add one, three. How about down this path? We say we're done adding threes. We're not even going to add a single extra three. So this is going to remain as two, two. Now, I think it's pretty obvious that down here, since we're only allowed to add values six and seven, neither of these is going to end up leading to the target. If we add a six, we'll get a total of, of 10. If we add a seven, we'll get a total of 11. Neither of these, you know, both of these go over our target. So let's quickly run through the rest of the decision tree. So over here, over here, we said we added a second two. So over here, we're not going to be adding any more twos. So here we can add a three. So we'd get two, three. And over here, we would skip adding threes, right? So we're going to, we're not going to add any more threes. This is going to remain as two. Now down this path, at this point, we have a total of five. So we're only allowed to add values three, six, or seven. All of those are going to end up leading to uh, a total of greater than seven. So we can't, we won't be able to find any solutions down this path. I'm just skipping and drawing it out because we're kind of running out of room. Now over here, what we said is we skipped two and we and since this path includes the one where we added a three, so here we're not going to add any threes. And so we're only allowed to choose six and seven. That's going to end up leading to uh, totals of greater than, it's going to lead to either eight or nine. Those are both greater than our target value. So here we're not allowed to add any twos because that's what this path was. So we can add a three or we can choose to skip three and have add nothing so here since we're we're not we're we're skipping three so we're only allowed to add sixes or seven so here we can say okay get a six this path we skip six so we're not allowed to add any sixes over here and from over here we'll say okay we can add a seven which will give us the total seven right that's the target that we're looking for so we did end up finding that so that's our second solution that we found now, since this, this path is going to lead to combinations that do include a seven, this path cannot include a seven, but you notice how as we are continuing to go down right paths, what we're saying is, okay, we're, we're, we're basically removing the number of elements we can choose from, right? We're popping two initially over here. Then when we go down here, we're, we're not allowing ourselves to choose three over here. We can't choose six. Then when we finally go down all the way over here, we're not even allowed to choose seven. So therefore we have no choices left. So this is also going to be a base case because we ran out of elements. And the way we're going to be tracking which elements we can choose from is we're going to have a pointer. Let's call it I. And so initially it's going to be here, which means we can choose any of these elements. As we pop an element like this one, we'd end up taking our I pointer and shifting it over here, which tells us, okay, we can only choose these elements now. So that's the main idea. This is going to be a recursion tree. Each uh, 
recursion step, we can make two decisions and it's pretty easy to code up once you can kind of understand this logic. Let me show you how to do that. By the way, the time complexity of this, you can see that our decision tree, we're making two decisions each time. So it's gonna be two to the power. What's the height of our decision tree gonna be? Well, each value in this is gonna be positive. It's gonna be at least one. So the height of the decision tree can be at most whatever the target value we're trying to make it. So T, so two to the power of T where T is the target value. Value. That's going to be the big O and uh, big O time complexity of this problem. So we are going to do this recursively, but let's have our result variable, which is basically going to be global for the scope of this problem, because I'm going to define a depth for search function inside of our outer function. So a few variables we're going to pass into here. We do want to maintain which of the candidates we're still allowed to choose. So like I said, we're going to have a pointer I that's going to determine that. We're also going to have a current variable. We're only going to have a single occurrence of this. It's just going to be a list that tells us what values we have added so far to the current combination. For example, like we could have two, we could have two, two, right? Two, two, three, et cetera, et cetera. And for the values in our current combination, we do want to have a total. So we want to be maintaining what's the total sum of those, because if it ever reaches our target sum, then we know we have found a solution. If we ever go over our target sum, that means we've reached the base case and we can't continue anymore. So in our DFS function, let's go ahead and define those base cases. We know the base case is if total ever ends up reaching target, that means we found the result. So what we're going to do is result.append. We want to append the actual combination, so we're going to append current. And we're since we're only maintaining a single uh, variable list for current, we don't want to actually append current itself. We want to create a copy of it because we're going to continue to use this current variable when we're doing the other combinations recursively. So we don't because then we're going to be modifying it. So we just want to create a single copy before we actually add it to the result. And after we're done with that, we don't want to continue the rest of this function. So we're just going to go ahead and break out of it by returning. So that's the base case where we succeed. What's the base cases if we end up uh, being impossible to find a combination? Well, one is going to be if I is out of bounds, meaning we can't choose any more candidates. So if I is greater than or equal to candidates, or our total ended up going over the target that we're trying to reach. That's a base case where we have to return immediately because we cannot find a combination then. Now for the actual recursive step. Remember we have two decisions to make. We can choose to include the value at candidates of I. Right, we can choose to include this value. What? So what are we gonna do if we're including this value? Well, first of all, we're gonna take our current uh, values that are in our combination, we're gonna take uh, that candidate and go ahead and append it to our current combination, right? We're going to do that before we end up actually calling our DFS function. So we're going to call DFS and what are we going to pass in? Well, we're including this candidate so we can con potentially continue to include it, right? So what we're going to say for our index I that we're passing in is I stays the same, right? We're not restricting which candidates we're allowed to choose from just yet. So I stays the same. We pass in current because we just updated it right now, so we can go ahead and pass it in. And the total did end up changing, so we took our current total and added this candidate to it, right? So we can go ahead and pass in total plus candidates of I. So let me delete this line because we're not doing anything with it. But yeah, so this is gonna be that first decision where we do include the candidate. Now the next decision is gonna be where we can't include it, but, but, but after we call this function, we wanna clean up a little bit. We ended up adding uh, this value to our current candidates, our current combination. So we wanna go ahead and pop that before we go down the other decision. And bef so once we pop that, we can go down the other decision. That's if we're not in ever going to include this candidate. So for the index, we're going to pass an I plus one, indicating that we can't include any, any occurrences of I. And for current, we can just go ahead and pass in our current combination. And total is going to stay the same because we didn't end up adding any value to it, right? We, we left our current uh, combination as the same as it was before when we actually called this function. And once that's done, we've we've basically made our two decisions, right? Can you see what's going on? Can you see that we called depth for search once and then we called it a second time? So we did create that two branch decision. And after we're done with that, we can go ahead and return. And in this case, we actually don't need to return. So that is the entire DFS function. Last but not least, what we want to do is actually call it out here. So we're going to call it passing in zero as the beginning index, passing in an empty array as the current combination and passing in zero as the current total. 
And then once that is done, we will have updated our result, which we declared up here. And then we can simply go ahead and return that result. It should contain all of the combinations that end up totaling to the target. So you can see this problem isn't too bad to code. This backtracking approach isn't too bad once you kind of understand the two decisions that we're actually making. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.